All right, welcome back, everybody. Now we are on part six of Mega Man X5. So we've just killed the first two Mavericks and beaten down the idiot. Now we're on to the next Maverick in our playthrough, which is going to be Matrix. Or, uh, what was it? Burn Tyranno or something, whatever. I think it was Flame Tyranno, actually. Or maybe Flame Tyranno. I don't know, whatever. This guy. Alright, once again, we are in the Lethal Lava Land, so we have to move quickly. And as you can see, Alia is trying to discourage you from getting the shuttle parts because the plot doesn't require them yet. That's what I get for getting greedy. Yeah, Zero's Buster really isn't all that useful. If you're fast enough, it is actually possible to go down and get to the hard tank before the lava passes. Oh, whatever, I got what I needed. Elliot, stop helping! Like I said, if you didn't help me, I would have gotten behind the rock. Now this is the part where Zero has a bit of trouble, because he has to blow up the door right up in front of it. He can't fire at it from a distance with it, like X can. Fortunately, the door dies really easy. Now this is where I really wish I had the double jump.
It is possible for Zero to get over there without using, uh, without the double jump, just like X can. Nope. I know it's possible to do it. I've done it. <laughs> Alright, we'll try it one more time, and if we don't get it through this time, then we'll just come back with a double jump. In case you're wondering why I keep jumping before attacking, it's because by jumping it's doing the over there it guarantees the overhead slash, whereas if you don't, it does the short stab first. The overhead slash hits multiple times and can kill enemy right armors in one hit. Whereas it can take two to three stabs and to kill a right armor and it doesn't really guarantee it either. these stupid bats. Also, the overhead slash covers a wider range and also can hit below zero, unlike the um, unlike the normal stat. Well, at least I got that life back. We're just going for the boss. We'll come back later. When we do our traditional after the boss battle, or after the, the eight bosses item hunt.
Unfortunately, enemies have a lot of invulnerability when you use their weakness against them. Would have rather, much rather not spent my E tang in that fight, but eh, whatever. area. Let's go ahead and get Zero equipped with his new part. Because we'll be needing it, because we're going to actually get the armor part in this stage. Oh wait, actually we can't get it because we need the double jump. Ha <laughs> ha. Alright, we're gonna have to come back. I almost ended badly. And that did! Okay, so basically what's supposed to happen is with the jumper part, Zero double jump will allow him just enough clearance to hit that upper left hand corner above the spikes. You actually also need to actually you need two boss weapons. The um the hyper you need the double jump from uh, Grizzly Slash and you need the weapon from Duck McWhalen because it gives Zero a uh, special air dash that allows him to angle it up and down. Uh, you also need the hyper dash part from Grizzly Slash. So that you get, because uh, with combined with Duck McWhalen's weapon, actually extends the length of Zero's air dash. And you need the basically you need the combination of those three parts 
or those, those two parts and weapons in order to uh, get up to that armor piece. But it is possible. Honestly, the reward's not very good, but yeah. Axel is even easier than X version, simply because all you have to do is just stay close to it, just stay just out of his range. Well, I wasn't doing that very well, but you just keep hitting him with the quick laser, which is down in attack, and he really can't do anything. Except die. Alright, now it's time to fight the actual first four Mavericks and get the remaining pieces. So we start off with Grizzly Slash. So we can finally get the double jump. Now remember, zero, like with uh, Axe of the Red stage, Zero cannot get the hard tank in the stage. So don't even bother trying. Oh, 
all things considering, the fact that Dr. Light knows who Zero and Alia are uh, makes me wonder just how sentient this hologram is. But yes, Zero and Dr. Light's hologram have a somewhat plot relevant conversation. So now, the Twin Dream works kind of similar to the Soul Body, or to the way the Soul Body worked in X4. Um, Essentially, what it does is it creates a clone of zero. Which repeats his movements. And it does extra damage to Grizzly Slash. Alright, we're going to go ahead and break off the video here, well, after this little bit of story. It's actually the exact same thing as on the X playthrough. Stay tuned, I'll be back in just a few minutes with the next part.